Hello, it's been a while, um, but I want to give a small tutorial on this time focusing on image because as, as far as I recall, I never really touched this topic, although I think I've worked with webcams. And just as, as an example, I showing my website, I deleted the text <laughs> windows on the top. But in the background, I have this Hydra sketch that um, modulates and changes the color of the window, famous Windows XP, is it? Um, wallpaper. And yeah, I just want to give you like a brief idea of like how I, I work with these images and hopefully this will be inspiring for you. And if I'm motivated, I will probably make more videos like this. If you like it so please hit the like button and subscribe that will be my motivation <laughs> okay so let's go to the editor and I deleted everything so we have to start with um, image and I just prepared something uploaded online so I'll just paste it here and don't worry I think I will is it better like this yeah I'll probably upload one of these, you know, final examples as a link in the description. So please check that out. You don't have to type all these things right now, or you can just open it from the description so you can kind of catch up if you want. So as we know, well, I'm, I'm not like explaining everything in Hydra. I assume that this is kind of advanced topic. So you already should be familiar with like basic stuff with Hydra. Yeah, so this is that. It's just showing the image, right? And what I like actually is to change the size so that it kind of, now it's like aspect ratio is completely screwed up. And I think the original image is supposedly square. So what I would do is, hmm. So scale is always really tricky because the first one scales uniformly in X and Y and the second one only affects the X direction. So if you do this, it will just stretch in the Y direction and shrinks in X direction. So this is sometimes a little bit confusing, but the way I like is to use this second parameter, um, like the first one just omitted. So if you one there's like nothing changes right oh well same as this basically so i want to have scale one and then just change the x direction which can be i mean you can do it like this way but also you know you don't have to if you don't change the window size and i because i'm recording this in 1080p yes sorry it's not 4k uh i assume that this will okay this will fix the thing because i'm just like inversing the aspect ratio of this window which is nine nine well 16 times nine so i'm just like flipping this to counter that effect so this is quite handy um for example if you're using webcam you want to like multiply this with your webcam uh aspect ratio. Does it work that way? I'm not really sure. Uh, let's not do it. Um, let's just hope that because in this case the original image is like square so I can just omit it. Anyways you can just tweak it and you know if it's it looks nice then it looks nice so we just start from there. And okay so I want to work with this image as um, kind of like a material and one way probably like everyone's familiar with is to use Luma. And wait a second. Yeah, I think this is okay. So Luma is always nice because this kind of trims the darker part of the image and keeps the lighter part. But in this case, like because the cat, you know, I think it's more interesting is the face the cat where it's darker so I would just say hey, invert luma and then invert 
it so that I can only trim the bright part of the image. And then, for example, if I want to have like OSC in the background, always nice OSC, it's a colored OSC. So I do it with three parameters and just label it. And again, like if you do threshold, it doesn't work this way because threshold doesn't give alpha layer. So always Luma. I mean, this is already something, right? And if you have like a source O0 and then I like scale it slightly so that it becomes like, whoop. I mean, this color is still there because of the frame buffer. But yeah, if you restart it, it's probably like blank, I suppose. I shouldn't have hit it. Oh, okay. Yeah, something like this and only like, you can do some rotate tiny bit to make it like some kind of interesting pattern. So this is one way of working with image, like kind of beginning or how to say like, I wouldn't say beginner, but like straightforward way of working, uh, <laughs> working with image. But the problem I see here is that unlike my Windows XP, you know, it's happening in just one place so this face is always staying there and you can't really change this part so one way I found is to instead of this luma like how can I kind of alternate all these parts to make it transparent it's I think it's easier to just demonstrate so Let's just go back to like super simple example. I'll just delete them because that's that. Um, I wouldn't even scale just to keep it simple. So I did Luma to add transparency to it. But again, this is static. And the way I work with image, um, if I want to change the color, I use this trick and it's explained multiple times in my Hydra book and in some tutorials, but basically this completely changes the color and this time it's just going crazy because OSC, let's say six. And now what you can see is like, actually it's kind of like grayscale. So it's a little bit similar to like what you would have saturate zero. So this is like a starting point I want to think about. But instead of like this normal grayscale in this version, the color is kind of like shifting all the time. Why? Because this OSC is moving. So if I keep it zero, then it's just grayscale with some kind of, yeah, let's say like inverted colors. And if I like make it a bigger number, then it will move faster and faster. And what's interesting with this is that um, one thing is like if I increase the number of the frequency in OSC, then you could see like more like kind of um, like topology. How do you say like you know in the map um, the line with the same height of the landscape. So you kind of start to like make this kind of stuff. And if you can, if you do like thresh with this, you can see the lines much clearer. Um, I did wrong, 0 0.1 and zero. And then it's, maybe it's a little bit too much, but you see the idea that now it's kind of like working with a histogram. Well, it's not histogram, but color curve, let's say, if you're familiar with like Photoshop or GIMP, you have this color curve you can adjust and you go really crazy with it and then you can have this similar effects. And this is super nice as a mask. So I will just output, I would normally put it everything in one line, but one code, but for now I just keep it to all one so that it's simple and use that source S zero, mask it with O one out, so it is O zero. And what happens is that now this mask is, as you see, as you saw in this version, 
it's shifting, so the original color, original image, its mask is kind of like temporarily changing. So sometimes the brighter parts are cut off, sometimes the darker parts are cut off, but it's keep alternating. Which is very interesting, like this is already quite interesting, but if you use um, feedback, then it becomes more interesting because, well, this wouldn't do anything because it's just overlaying on top of the same thing. But if I start to say, hey, I want to scale this. Then you can see that like this kind of expanding effect is like suppressed at some point and then comes back in. So it gives like temp Virality to you know working with the image, and actually now it's an interesting part to like think think about like where would I correct the aspect ratio because I think if you do it here then it can screw it badly. I'll do it just demonstrate because it makes kind of weird feedback so you have to keep it in here so that. Yeah, no, well, it's kind of interesting too. Okay, so this is what I want. I want to like just shrink the layer on top, but the feedback shouldn't be affected by this scaling aspect ratio correction issue. Anyways, so you can do like pretty much anything from here. Like you can, I'm just doing scale right now, but maybe I can add something to it. Can we saturate? And again, always use small number. And in case of saturate, one won't change anything. So you have to like increase from, it's a bit like scale. Um, if you start with like two, then probably it, it goes like, yeah, a bit crazy. So, okay. Um, something like this. And then um, you might want to, actually, you know what? I won't, don't like this scaling. So I want to, rather than shrinking it, in the x direction, I will expand it in the y direction so it's kind of like zoomed. Just do it like this way. Okay, because this will uniformly uh, expand in x and y directions. So, this, well, okay, this is already very interesting. I think <laughs> you can just add rotate or you can do like my favorite modulation. Maybe I cut this off, modulate. Um, you don't have to remember, but this, this modulated by, okay, I need to do it here, modulated by noise sub gradient and one, and this will be zero point zero one so that it's, yeah, I don't want to say trippy, but I guess it's like a trippy kind of <laughs> effect. <laughs> I'll make it a bit noise um, smaller. Yeah. So again, like the advantage of working in this way with, um, wait, ah yeah, this is the mask part, that you, instead of like just putting Luma, modulate on the color in time so that one part of the image is trimmed or masked out and sometimes it comes back and other parts are gone and it comes back it makes really like visually like interesting effect oh, it doesn't really mean anything um, what else can i do with this um you know you can also like play with the mask Right now, they, I put threshold 0 0.1, but what if I put like 0 0.9? Then what happens is that the masked out part is much bigger now. So a lot of parts of the image is masked out, but you still kind of see the image sometimes. Okay, maybe this modulation is a bit too much. Yeah, so it kind of like gives the taste of the original image, but it just disappears like super fast, like dispersed. But it kind of comes back like once in a while. 
So this is like, let's say it's like a more abstract version. Um, and also right now it's, the mask is purely dependent on the color of the image, but of course, not of course, but if you take this sub gradient thing away, it becomes also very interesting that I think, wait, I'll put the threshold back again. So now it's like coming from the right to left, it's kind of like keeping the original movement of OSC, but also the mask. So it's just like a combination of color and space and X, Y somehow blended into each other. I don't know if that's really <laughs> explanatory, but the, the beauty of it is that you can just work with this code and I'll just comment out and then um, put it in the description so you can play with it. And if you find, if you make something interesting, please post in the comment and yeah, or send me by email or whatever that I can see it. it will be nice. Of course, you can work with different images or it can be webcam or yeah, in its screen p5.js, whatever that you like, and have fun with working with images in Hydra. So thanks for watching. Um, please hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't, and I hope you have a nice day. Thank you.